visit hours are from 9 until 3 every day. Back on the youth unit, the newest arrival prepares for hard time behind bars. My name is Adam Contreras, 17 years old. It was seemed like a scary movie. It seemed like it seemed like all a movie for a little bit, you know. Honestly, I thought it was a joke from the time I got went and got locked up, incarcerated. The day it was sentencing, it was just mind blowing because I mean, it felt like my life just changed in 30 minutes. When you send out those uh, visit forms, you can send out. 12, but you can only put seven in an envelope and not have to pay additional postage, okay? okay. All right. Adam is serving a 10-year sentence for robbery and burglary, but it could have been much worse. I was facing 85 to life. And the reason why they looked at the 85 to years was because of the felonies, what the felonies were. There was violence. There was a uh, handgun involved. There was a, uh, somebody had gotten shot several times, multiple times. Then they looked at my background. This wasn't the first uh, shootout I ever been in. This wasn't the first possession of a firearm. Then what really hurt me was the uh, tattoos and the gang relation, and then the alias. That's what hit it all. That's what just sparked the fire right there. Rap sheets like Adams are well known to the juvenile court justices tasked with waving youth to adult prisons, but that doesn't make their job any easier. The children that I have waved over the years, you know, you know them well. They've been in your court many times, sometimes, you know, dozens and dozens of times. It's always painful. It's just always painful because you know that, um, you know, you're putting a child in adult prison. What comes down to me is if I have something in the juvenile system and I can keep the community safe, why wouldn't I keep them in the juvenile system? Back when I was in juvenile, you know, I used to hear about people getting waved. But never did I think it was going to be me. And I'm not the good guy out of all this. I'm not trying to position myself as a good guy at all. You know, I need to sit back and think, you know, what, what's going on. This isn't all a joke anymore. You know, I'm, I got 10 years, and 10 years isn't a joke, you know. Even though Adam just arrived in the juvenile block, the thought of eventually moving to an adult prison weighs heavily on his mind. I've, I've had so many people from recently just got out of prison, you know, hey, what's prison like? You know, let me give me a heads up. It's really how you go in there and carry yourself. Be cool, you know, don't get in nothing you can't get yourself out of. Okay. So you were saying earlier, when you have a good bunkie, then. Bunkie, yeah. So tell me about, you've been here longer than him. Yeah. So what was it like when Adam, you found out Adam was going to be your roommate? What's that like to get a new roommate? I don't like it, but you gotta deal with it in here. But like when I first came here, I didn't want to come here, but I had to. So I had a roommate, and I knew him from the county, so I already knew who he was. So I didn't really care. So we was getting along. The entire 18, he was already 18, went to the dog block. So I had a room to myself. New guy came in, they moved me downstairs, put me in a room with my uh, friend. So knew him too. Not like that. Two different places though, so then they switched him in my room. So I ain't care. Gotta get along. Is it hard to get along when you live in such a small space? I mean, literally, look at this. You have a toilet, a sink, and two beds. Is it hard to live in a room this small? Yeah, because I ain't used to it, but you gotta make the better of it. You gotta do what you gotta do. So. so tell me, um, <clears throat> you were just talking about mail. Tell me again about what it's like. What do they do, come around every day to deliver mail? Yeah, in the nighttime. Yeah. Like, they pass our mail around at 9 or 10. They give it to us. If you don't get mail, some people get mad over it. Because you expect the mail. It's an anticipation. It's an anticipation. So that's probably one of the bigger moments of the day, how everybody yeah. waits for the mail to arrive? Yep. Really? And phone calls. So how do phone calls work? How do you make phone calls? Got to press one for English, press one for collect call, then you dial the number, then you put in your PIN number, and if you ain't got no money on there, it's going to say it. Record. So you have to have money in your offender account, is that yeah. right? on your phone. 
like a prepaid card. Do your parents or someone have to pay for that? Yeah, they yeah. got to put money on there. Mm -hmm. And can you call any time during the day? Yeah, we only come out two hours a day in here, so I ain't really used to that two hours because we weren't coming out. The, well, we was coming out a lot at the county, but you're used to it now. It's the life. Do your crime, got to do your time. So you're only out of your room two hours a day? Uh-huh. I thought it was 20 hours. <laughs> even when there's education? That's all part of the education? Oh, uh, no, nah, we don't count that time. Okay. So you have two free hours? Yeah. And the rest of the time you're out doing education or? Yeah, sometimes or we in here. Um, how much time do you guys have for breakfast and lunch? It seems like you guys kind of speed through it in 15, 10 minutes. Uh, we only have breakfast for like five minutes, 10 minutes, and that's all. We got breakfast at five, lunch at 12 or 11, dinner at five. So, this food ain't good, but you gotta eat or you'll starve. Does the routine ever get to you after a while? It's the yeah. same thing every single day. Yeah, the routine that got to me when I got to county for a whole year, got used to it. Mama told me not to get used to it, but I got used to it anyway. So. Okay, so both tell me how long you were in county. I was in county. I was in the county for a year, a year and a month. So. And that's county jail. Uh huh. Marion County. I've always been in Allen County Jail for about at least a year, almost a year. You know. Nine, ten months. Paint the picture for me of what kind of jail's like. Man, hell. That's how I can it. It's the only way I can picture it. You know, it's, you're up all day. Don't get me wrong, you're up all day. But man, you can't do anything. You know, I'm, this is really better. I'd rather be locked down two hours here, however long you're locked down here, before I go back to county. You know, I just, it's way better. You don't get a TV in your room. You know, they got TVs out there on the floors, but it's way better here. My name is Adam Contreras, 17 years of age. So, Adam, um, if you could just tell us where you are right now um, and how long you've been here. Here in uh, Wabash Valley Correctional Facility. Been here for a week or so. So, what was it like for you knowing you were coming to an adult correctional facility when you were only 17 years old? Can you tell us what that was like? Kind of mind blown, you know. Never thought you'd see this picture in life, but you're here now, so ain't no turning back. So when you first got here, um, what did you think to yourself? Did you think, I'm not even gonna try and make friends, I'm, I'm just gonna walk in and do what I need to do, or what was your mindset when you first got here? Into the you just start with my mindset when I first got here. My mind was set for, you know, I'm not gonna say really not make any friends because, you know, you can't go anywhere and just not wanting to push everybody off, you know, because you gotta stay communicating with people, you gotta socialize with people. But I kind of set my mind for, you know, stay out of trouble, do what I gotta do to get home to my family. And friends are out there, and. This just isn't the place for someone to be. You don't have family or friends here. I mean, you might have some, a couple friends that you had out there, but this isn't the hangout spot. Can you tell us um, what what brought you into the system to begin with? Uh, my charges were attempt to murder, robbery, burglary, criminal recklessness, possession of a firearm. Um, Kind of crazy. I just. Were, were you high? Were you drunk? Was there anything related to it that made you? No, just I'd say dumb. Just wasn't thinking at the moment. You know, and just went off of. I could have took it in another way. Could have got professional help, which would have been the police department or something. But I took it into my own hands and decided to do it myself. Um, 
were you were you in the system as a, a juvenile, a delinquent before you came here? Was there a history kind of? Yeah, there was a long history as a juvenile, real long history with all types of things. But uh, I had just got out of boys' school a couple months before and went straight back no less than 60 days, I want to say, to county here. Can you explain what? Can you explain what boys' school is for people who might not understand what boys' school is? Boys' school, I was at Pendleton, Pendleton Boys' School, which is right across the street from the Pendleton County in prison. Uh, man, it's, when you go there, you think, you know, you're just going to have fun, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's none of that. I mean, you might get settled in, don't get me wrong, you might have your times here and there. But it's just depressing when you're far away from home and you don't have anybody there to, you know, communicate with, to talk to, and to lean on when you're there. Pendleton is juvenile detention place isn't nothing. You know, it's a scary thought when you're behind, you know, barbed wire, three, four fences of barbed wire, towers. It's, it's not the life you want to live behind gates, you know. So Pendleton is actually a juvenile prison. But now you're in an adult. An adult prison, all right. It's kind of crazy because, you know, I, there was always. Can you stop that again? Sorry, it just goes too loud. It's kind of crazy because there's always people, you know, people that always mistaken me, but I guess not mistaken me, but they always said, one day you're going to end up in prison, you know, and I always doubted it, you know, not me, not me, but, you know, I never changed my ways. They always told me if I, if I didn't change my ways, this was. It was either this, the streets, or dead. And can you tell me about your life? Can you tell me about your life growing up and what you think led you to do some of the things you did? Uh, my mother, she was a great mother. My family was a great family. Uh, I'm not going to blame it on the father figure because I, that's just not my speech. I feel like, you know, since I since I had since I was capable of getting in the, capable of getting in the system at 12 years old, I was a young man. I feel you know, so I can't blame it on my father figure for not being there. You know, I think it was my own role to move on. Uh, my mother, she just never had really had a man. She has my stepfather there, but I always seem to play the 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 man figure in the house. You know, so at 12 years old. I started slanging drugs, uh, holding pistols, going with gang members. Felt, felt coming like I felt wanted. I, w I was wanted with my family, but not the same wanted I wanted to feel. You know, I was going to school. I was seeing boys, chill with boys, you know, hanging out, just having a good time. And from there, it led to alcohol. Alcohol led to marijuana. From marijuana, it led for me Grand Theft Auto. Uh, under the influence, I had gotten to shootouts. Under the influence, I lost two of my boys when I was 14. From there, it just escalated into me not having the mind of, I don't care, it feels, you know. But it's it gets to me now, you know. Did seeing your friends get shot um, do you think that that was a real turning point for you? Did you feel like? Um, sorry to say, but it, it, it just made me go. It just, you know, I went all the way. I seen that my, you know, that my boys were just killed. So that just gave me the mentality of when they got killed, that just gave me the mentality to go after rivalries and do all types of things, not care, holding it down, supposedly whatever you want to call it. I just didn't care. That's when it got deeper and deeper into the game and the gang activity. So were all of your charges, the attempted murder and all that, was it gang related? No. No, it wasn't gang related. It was family matters. 
when I say family matters. Uh, just too many threats was made, and you know I could only take so much. And it, to the to the point it's just where I exploded and took it in my own hands. When you think back at that time now, do you wonder like what was I thinking? Yeah, I do. I do think about that. Like, you know, like wow, because I had just got out of boys' school. You know, that would be my fear to go back, but. It wasn't my fear, you know, when you had that, the gun in your hand, you just, feels like you're on top of the world, really, you know, but it just, I felt like I needed to, before he got me, I wanted to get him. And it should have been handled a whole nother way. Was this a family member? Yes. Do you feel like you were sort of acting in self-defense, though? Yeah. Yep. Yes, because I know I know what he's reliable of, and I know what I'm capable of. You know, so it was either a family member on my side or him. So I, him out of everybody. Did you try and make that case in court at all, or? Uh, on the day on the day I had went to court, I went to court February 25th for my trial date. I had trial. It was in the middle of session. Uh, Prosecutor and attorney stood up and said they got a plea agreement for me. If I wanted to take it or not, we can continue on with trial. Right there, that was just like the dream of my life because I was facing 85 to life. So when they told me 30 years, I said, wow, you know, I could be out here when I'm 30 something thinking they're gonna give me the whole 30 to 15. They gave me 30 to 15, 30, execute 20, suspend 10, do 10. So you know, if I was to come in here and do good, I could be out in six years, four or five years. It depends on me, really, you know. But if I was to mess up, get all types of write-ups for BS or whatever, I'd be here for the whole ten, and it wouldn't be worth it, you know. What do you think um, people on the outside think of you, think of what kind of kid you are. What would you want people to know about you that maybe they don't understand about you? Well, people don't know about me, really, except for my mother, honestly. My mother's the only one, is that, you know, I can give and give and give, and I can help all I want and do all that. People don't see that in me because they think I'm this monster, whatever you want to call me. But when it comes down to it, I. I'm the one that has step out for anybody in the front line or help anybody. I'm a helper, uh, and I can love, you know, and I love my family with all my heart. I love my friends, but people just don't see that in me. They don't think I have feelings or anything. So, you know, when this case happened, they just thought it was all just reaction. They, ne they didn't see behind the scenes what was going on. So. so since you had just gotten out of Pendleton and boys' school, did you think when this happened that, okay, they're going to send me back to boys' school? Did you think, did you ever think, I I'm going to be heading to an adult prison? No. When I thought, when I thought, matter of fact, when I was doing the, the criminal act, I told myself, I'll go back to boys' school, time 21. Ooh, 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 what, four years? Okay. And I could do that. but. When I got there, when I got into court the next day, uh, Jennifer Springfield, she had told me, you know, I was a menace to society. And it was kind of mind blowing because I see where she's going now, you know. I'm 16 years old, and back when I was in the count, back in juvenile, 13, 14, I used to hear about people getting waived. But never did I think it was going to be me. And boom, she said, You are now waived to adult court. And all I could do was just stare at my mom while she cried and cried her tears out. And, you know, from there, I told myself, you know, I lipped to her. I was like, it's all right, I'll get bonded out. You know, I got boys out there that got money, they'll bond me out. Well, when I got there, it was 50000 It was 100000 pay 50000 My mom wasn't going to do that at all. You know, nor my friends had that type of money to just put up. 
And my mom, she was willing to do whatever, which was putting up the house, putting up the car. But I knew because of the case I got, I know what I would have did, which was fled. Uh, yeah. Would have taken off? Yeah. Do you regret what happened? Do you look back and think, um, man, I wish I could turn back time and um, start all over? I'm not going to really say regret because, you know, I don't regret things in life. It's just a lesson learned in life. You know, so I really don't regret anything, but I sit back and think it could have been handled a whole nother way than which it was handled. But I sit back and, you know, just pray that, you know, have mercy on him for, you know, what was said. And I'm not the good guy out of all this. I'm not trying to position myself as a good guy at all. You know, I need to sit back and think, you know, what what's going on. This isn't all a joke anymore. You know, I'm, I got 10 years and 10 years isn't a joke, you know. I got family out there. My mother, she's getting older. My mother can't take this anymore. She's been going through, you know, six, five years for me already. So she can't take it anymore, you know, so. Did you ever think about that when you were in the midst of getting in trouble? Did you ever stop to think in the middle of all of it, man, this is going to kill my mom. You know, if I get caught, why am I doing this to my mom? That was the thing. I was selfish. I never cared what anybody thought. Anything, it's just, that was always an excuse for me when I got in here. Dang, my mom, my family. Uh, when I get on the phone, I promise mom I'll do better. You know, just to hear spirit in her, you know, because every time I call her, she'd be, down, you know, what's wrong, Mom? My baby's gone, you know? It's gonna be all right, Mom, I'm, you know, I'm a grown man. No, you're not a grown man, you're not. And, you know, it was hard for me to talk to her on the county phones and to see her in visitation. You know, I can see a person knows their mother, and every time she's coming to visitation, you can just, you know, she's doing fine physically, and but I can, I can just see right through my mother, and it wasn't right. I could tell it wasn't right. And when I get on the phone with her, she'd be sick, like real sick. And, you know, I'd, I'd blame myself. You know, she'd tell me not to blame myself. And I'd say, okay, just to, you know, make her feel better. But when I got off that phone, it was just a whole disaster, you know, because I knew it was me. I was killing my mother softly. So you said you had a great family, but obviously was there something, you know, that you were surrounded by, neighborhood, gangs, was there, it's hard for a lot of people to understand how kids just suddenly turn to a life of crime. Um, and what makes some kids do it and other kids not do it? Well, was your neighborhood bad? No, the neighborhood was real good. The neighborhood was real good. It's just the people in the neighborhood I wasn't, I was into sports, I loved basketball, but they was just goody-goody, and I wasn't the goody-goody type, you know. Um, I was going to a Christian school for a little bit. I was doing good, you know, but when it turned to the point where I started going to public schools and elementary public schools, it just turned to, I started seeing older people. I always wanted to be the older person, you know. I never hung out with nobody my age, nobody. And I seen they was getting money, I seen the cars, I seen the clothes, I seen the women, you know, I seen the guns, you know. It just, it turned me on like, wow, you know, I, I want that to be me one day. You know, I heard people talking about, you know, him, you know that. Now in Fort Wayne, you say, you know, little man, yeah, who doesn't know little man? I'm out there, but it wasn't the reputation I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it to be the reputation like, yeah, he, he's cool, yeah. But now it's the reputation where, oh, if I see him, I'm gonna kill him. It's, it's a crazy reputation, but I feel like people sometimes, kids jump to this because they wanna feel comfort or they just wanna, you know, follow. And I refuse, you know, I'm not gonna say I wasn't a follower, 
because obviously I was a follower to get into this, but I always, you know, even though I did get in this position, I always say I'm a leader. I'm going to be a leader, you know. I got a little brother out there, and I, well, I wouldn't know what to do if he was in here. I, man, you know, he's, a, he's, he's great. I wouldn't know what to do with him in here. Is he getting in any trouble at all right No, now? matter of fact, my brother's doing good, my little brother, you know. He went, you know, every time I talked to him, you know, because he was doing bad for a little bit in the grades and, you know, that's how I started, grades. You know, so I'm not going to let him get bad grades. I'm not going to, you know, lecture him, do all that, cuss him, cuss at him, do whatever, because that never helped me, you know. And I can't yell at him because I did the same. You know, I can't say bad, you know, I never did that, no, because I did the same thing. Only thing I can tell him is keep, you know, keep them grades up, boy, and do good. He'll say, yeah, uh, when you coming home, that's what kills me the most. When you coming home and, you know, he had went to my trial date and then he heard the plea agreement and he just put his head down, you know. He doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't at all. And then when I had called my mother when I got back to the block, I had talked to my mother and she said, your little brother said that if you'll be home when he's 20. And it just, I couldn't hold anything back. I had to let it go, which was tears. And because my little brother shouldn't know what that is, you know. And How old is he? He's only 10. And he doesn't know what it is at all, this life. I don't want him to know. I don't, I even hate for him to come see me because it's just, when he was doing bad, I had him come see me at Pendleton. And he was just mind-blowing and scared, you know. And I'd scare him here and there, you know. Come on, let's go back to my cell. Come on, little bro, let's go. No, no, no. All right, then, you know, he straightened up, you know. And it wasn't just the grades he was doing. He was talking back to mom. Mom already got too much on the plate, you know. She doesn't, why? Why does she need all that for what? You know. What's your earliest memory of going down the wrong path, getting in trouble? How young were you when you really started to have that mindset? Twelve. Twelve years old. Um, my mom grounded me. She grounded me and, you know, she scolded me in front of all my friends. And I had to look like the hard ass, you know. And she said, go to your room. All right, I'll go. You know, I sat in my room and seen, you know, and I told myself, she's not going to talk to me like this. I'm a grown man. Looked to myself as a grown man, you know. And from there, I hopped out my window. And you know, where does that come from to, to like, want to disrespect your mom at age 12? You know, most kids at age 12 are pretty much still a baby at that age. Well, at that time, I was, I was hanging, like I said, I was hanging out with older people, which was 15, 14, at, that, at my age. You know, an average 15-year-old nowadays is out smoking weed, and that's how it was back then. So I seen they, I looked up to them 15 and 16-year-olds back then. And, you know, they, a 15 and 16-year-old always acts grown. So at 12, I was acting grown. My mother's not going to talk to me like this. Boom, took off as a runaway. Had my mom stressing for a few weeks. Stressing. Stressing bad, you know. And from there, it just escalated all from there. So you're 17 now. All right. So you'll be here in this unit for at least another year, probably. Probably, yeah. Until you're 18. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, most kids after that, or whenever beds are available, end up transitioning out into right. general population at any given adult prison. Have you thought about that at all? Tell me what you think about eventually being side by side with 2,000 other adult offenders. I'm ready and I'm not. You know, you got to be ready. It's coming regardless. You know, I should have thought about this a long time ago. You know, so there's no asking the superintendent, can I go home now? 
know, you got to do what you got to do now. You know, it's time to man up whether or not it's 5,000 people, you know. All I can say is, you know, don't trust anybody. Keep your back towards the wall and maintain to yourself, you know. Do what you got to do, you know. Get home, you know. There's nobody in here that loves you. There's no one in here that cares for you. So get home. Are you afraid at some point that you're going to, um, if you serve your whole 10 years, that you're going to become hardened to this whole life behind bars and be just another adult prisoner like everybody else? So institutionalized, really? Mm -hmm. I refuse not to. I refuse. My, my brother is my goal. My brother, my niece and nephew is my goal. My main goal to get home, my mother, my family is my main goal to get home. And I let them down so many times. I refuse to let them down, literally this time, you know. You know, I still got things to think over. I'm not going to say I changed overnight at all, no. Because I still got the mind frames of, dang, when I, when I get out, I'm going to do this when I get out, you know. Oh, my boy got this waiting for me, you know. But where are my boys at, you know, like, where are you at? You know, I got a boy in here that we grew up together. Here at Wabash? Yeah. He's on this block. And, you know, we grew up together, and but we've been locked up all our lives. You know, we, we me and him was always in the system. Out of the whole gang, it was me and him all the time together. Why? Why you two? Any idea of what? The fame, that's all I want to say, you know. It back, back then to us, this was the stuff to go through, you know, to come into middle school, a whole bunch of police officers. Boom, we're looking for Adam Contreras. Boom, and then they come into ISS. You got a whole bunch of people in ISS, so you just stand up and want to be the hard ass. And there you are, you know. And then come back from school. Where was you at? Oh, I was in, you know, I was in jail. Yeah, I was in jail. You know, it just turned a whole bunch of fame on and girls got turned on by it and it was always me and him you know through it all the bad yeah. boys yeah the bad boys did you know he was here before you came here did i know he was here yeah i did but i didn't think he was gonna you know i'd have honestly i thought he turned 18. but when i got here i was like wow you know what's up man you know we got together got talked you know a little bit you know, and I seen in him, his mind frame is changing. You know, it's, you know, we talk here and a lot, but we have our real talks. You know, we might joke around, but we have our literally talks. And he told me, you know, he, he doesn't know what to do. You know, you know, we're all like, I'm going, I'm going crazy. You know, it's, this is getting to me. You know, and he got it's five, six more years ahead of him. You know, and I try to tell him, you know, bro, it's, it's going to be like this. You know, I can't really say, oh, I was in, you know, penalty for two years or whatever. But I know how to how to handle this. This is a whole big mind game, you know, and you got to learn from this. Don't just think you're going to come in here, watch TV, eat, lay down. No, this is the time for you if you don't have a GED. Get your GED. Do what you got to do. Get closer to your family, you know. Don't be lazy about anything, you know. Socialize with people. How do you not go crazy, though? I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in this room, which to me, I, I would be claustrophobic after a day. How do you not let the walls close in on you? You know, at the age 12 from now, it's just like, this is the second home, it feels. You know, like, it might be something, you know, crazy or something, but, you know, you got a cool bunkie, and then, you know, that's your best friend, basically, while you're in here, you know, so you just communicate, you know, try to keep your mind off all that stress, and you don't need to stress. You're already stressed enough, you know. You got to worry about, if you have a family, you got to worry about them, what's going on. You know, that's my worst fear while I'm in here, you know. Ten years go by, who knows? My little brother can have somebody pregnant. 
you know, mother, stepfather passed away. You know, who knows? You don't ever know. So you just always got to set your mind for things and understand what's coming. There are a lot of people who say, um, you know, once somebody's been locked up for a long time, they're just going to learn even more bad habits. And by the time they get out, you've just created a better criminal. Do you believe that? 50-50, yeah. Because some people do come in here just to, you know, get connects, which might by means, you know, get to know drug lords. I was out there doing it and all that. But then you got some people that come in here that it takes all this. Just, hey, wake up. Look what you're doing, you know? Because I feel like this is a second chance, you know? God gives you, this is my blessing. This is the first blessing I ever had in life. You know, I used to sit in my room, a single man cell, and be like, what the hell, God? When am I gonna get a blessing? You know, I ask you and I, I get on my hands and knees and I beg and I pray and pray and pray. When am I gonna get a blessing? You know, I used to ask for dumb things. You know, Lord, when am I gonna get a Mercedes Benz? When, no, but this is my first blessing. I sat down and realized I could have been 85 to life in prison, not knowing any of my family anymore. Not saying they'll give up, but your family eventually will get tired of this, you know, because you, you don't put them through so much. They don't want to continue to go with this. They don't have to, you know. They, they're here because really I want to say it's like a privilege for them to be here with you and it's your family. So you said initially they were talking 85 to life? Correct. So there must, was there violence involved? No, I don't, it was, I don't it was know just, anything about your case. So. Yeah, there was, there was violence. There was violence. There was a, a handgun involved. There was a, somebody had gotten shot several times, multiple times. Uh, the reason why they looked at the 85 years was because of the felonies, what the felonies were. There was A's. And uh, then they looked at my background and seen this wasn't the first uh, shootout I ever been in. This wasn't the first possession of a firearm. Then what really hurt me was the uh, tattoos and the gang relation, and then the alias. That's what hit it all. That's what just sparked the fire right there. Alias and the gang. What's your alias? The little man. What, um, I think, you know, most people can't, like, I can't imagine having a gun in my hand and actually pulling the trigger, but I've talked to so many kids over the past 13 years and doing this for so long, and so many kids say to me, it's like I wasn't really in my right mind. Like, when I was doing it, it's almost like it wasn't me doing it. I kind of removed myself from the situation and just started firing. Um, I had my mind set for it. You know, I knew what I was going in for. You know, I was, I, I was going in to kill. That's what I, that was my goal. You know, but yeah, I do agree with you on that. You know, once you pull that trigger, it just, it feels like it starts to twitch and you can't let go. You know, and then once you shoot somebody once or once you fire a gun once, you're like, dang, you've already experienced it. It's nothing really, you know, just a loud shot and a boom. You know, someone could be hit. You know, innocent bystander can be hit. And I've been in situations where innocent bystander was hit. You know, a little girl was hit. And it's just crazy. This game is, is messed up. It really is. And no fear? Like, you, are, is there an adrenaline rush? Are you scared? Um, when, when you're having... When you're in the middle of some gunfight, it's, it's, it's crazy because you can't see a bullet. You can't at all. It goes so fast, you can't see it, you know? And I've been been in standoff shootouts, you know? Him right there, me right here, shootouts. And just shoot, you know? And you just don't... I've been in the big shootout, gang shootouts, and it's like, dang, I'm running, and just one of these bullets hit me. It's over. Are you surprised you're not dead? I ask God every day. I ask him, like, you know, he done took, like, so many of my people. Since I've been in the game, I done lost 16 people, boys, and I'm only 17. And 
all over gang violence and all over by the gun, the streets, you know, what escalated, you know, it escalated, the streets escalated in gang violence and You just wonder where it ends. Right, like, all right, you know, I ask God, like, what, what am I doing right, you know? And my mom always says, you're here for a reason, babe. What's the reason, mom? You're here for me. And then I'd be like, hey, I am here for you, mom, you know, I am. But then I look at the street life, and you know, I would think the gun would have been, been took me through all the things I've been through, all the shootouts, all the deaths that I've, the funerals I've been through. You'd think it'd be my turn next, you know, and just all the times I could have been shot, and you know, guns put into my head, to my throat, whatever. It's a God blessing. So if you could um, have sort of a perfect life, and you could start all over again. What would that perfect life be for you if you could start all over? For me to make my mother happy. For me to be the man of my mother. You know, my mother doesn't need no man, but she has a spectacular stepfather, my stepfather. My stepfather is my father. You know, never had a father figure. Uh, stayed in school, you know. This year would be my last year, you know. You know, just get my diploma, you know, show my mom, let my mom come to graduation, uh, go to college and work for her because so much she has done for me. You know, my baby sisters, well, they're older than me, but I call them my baby sisters, you know, because I was the one that always protected them through whatever. I always protected them. They always came to me if they needed something, really to make my family happy, for me to have a stable job, you know, not a street job for me to understand what life is when I was back then. What would you want other kids in your situation who are out on the streets right now getting into the same kind of trouble you got in, what would you want them to know from room 109 here at Wabash Valley? Man, please stop, you know. You know, I know, I know that each and every person out there has a mother, has somebody that cares for them, whether it's a grandma, a best friend, whatever that doesn't want them doing this. Nobody wants somebody doing this at all because, you know, I know they probably don't understand right now and probably not really listening, blowing me off right now, you know, but people don't lie when they say it's either this, the streets are dead. You know, it's your choice, it's your life. I'm not gonna scold you, I'm not gonna do anything. But, you know, I beg you myself you know, and people rarely hear that from me. I don't want to see them in here. I don't want to. I don't want their family to go through what my family had to go through. You know, this is a lesson learned. They don't want to live like this. You know, ten, fifteen, the life years, whatever. This isn't a joke. You know, they need to wake up and understand. It's it's hard to sit here and talk to you, and you know, kind of watch your face and and hear you talk and think that this person is the same person who on the outside was gang banging <laughs> and shooting at people. Um, that's like two different people to me. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I honestly do, you know. Like could I have trusted, if I would have been walking down a dark alley at night with a purse over my shoulder by myself in your neighborhood, would I have been a target for you? No, no. Because that's what people that, think. Nope. Yeah, I don't want them to think that at all. They probably do, but no, that's one thing, you know. A woman is a woman, and a, and a responsible man, you know, which would be a man that has a job. A man, to me, is, has a job and maintains to keep, you know, his family right. But a target would never be a man, would never be a woman. So you, you know. didn't engage in any sort of, like, random... No, hey, never. Check out that one walking down the street, let's go rob her. Never, never. I've always been the helper on them, you know. I had multiple times to do it, you know. Hey, it's tax check year, let's go. No, nah, that ain't me, man, you know. I got family that, I, ooh, I wouldn't know what to do if somebody did that to my mother. You know, I always look at the mother, the mother. But 
I don't look at as a young man pulling the trigger. So he. But yours was more related to gang activity. Gang activity. So I think a lot of people think bad kids. They'll just come no. rob you at the drop of a dime. They'll break into your house. No. Don't walk down the street. Them would, get I'd hate to say, but them would be probably the ones you could honestly get to help if something was to go on, you know? If, you know, hey, could you watch my house that just got broken into? Them are really the big eye openers, you know, that uh, stay on it. But if you don't want to trust them, you don't want to trust them. But it is because I know I'm one, you know, but a lot of my mother's friends, you know, was scared of me for a little bit, you know? But until I sat down and talked to them, you know, because they got younger kids. And I've always been the example for everybody. My mom, Adam, get out here. I'd come out there, sit down, talk to them, talk to these little boys, talk to them, you know, tell them, you know, it's not the life as I'm talking now. You know, I've always been the mentor and the example. And, you know, I love to be that, you know. So last question, if we were going to come visit with you in five years, eight years, what kind of Adam do you think we'd see then? What kind of Adam do you want? If you came to see me in five, six years, four, uh, I'd be well educated. I'd have my GED. Uh, I'd have at least two degrees. And really, you might not see me. I'd probably be out of modification, be going home. So. It'd be, it'd be a blessing, though, if you guys, you know, came to see me and I achieved my goals because you guys are my eyewitnesses for me to tell this to, you know, and that would be my goal, me get my GD. And the only time I would want you guys to see me is me walking out them gates.